right thing? Right. Okay. This is going to be the lightning version of a stripped down talk, so uh, if it seems discoherent, that's why. Uh, I'm talking about the things we discovered while doing the derouter, which is uh, our Brocade software data plane. And it's architected so we have a user's place data plane using the DBDK. We have the kernel where we make devices visible through ToonTap in the data plane. Uh, we have a controller process that's a lot like what OVSDB does, which coordinates and handles restart. And we have a CLI and some other APIs where control stuff comes in. We connect all these bits together using ZMQ sockets, which allows us to have restartability. And we are also, these two entities don't have to run on the same box. One thing we did, and this is probably something that everybody runs into, we took the approach, kind of like it was mentioned earlier, we wanted it to work out of the box. We didn't want to have people having to have a config file about which thing got assigned to which cores. It had to just work. So it, the, when the V router starts, it uses the resources that are available. What that means is in this example, we gave it an eight core system. We reserve CPU zero for the master because first of all, I don't know if you know, in Linux, CPU zero gets bothered by a lot of things. And we also need some resources to do all the control plane processing, all the routing demons and all the other stuff. So CPU zero is basically overloaded and we use it for the master to communicate with the data plane. We assign cores to receipt to Nix. In a, this is the simple algorithm that was done in the old release, but basically we have two receive queues and one transmit queue for a 10 gig NIC. Say why only two? Well, it was a trade-off. We could have more, but it was at some point you start to bother the PCI bus more without getting any bandwidth benefit and smaller is better. Two seemed to be the, the, the least number we could do and get the numbers we wanted. So we sign, we see queues to processors, and then we go through and we sign the transmit queue work to processors. Um, so we split the receive and transmit into two different things, and we, if there's extra processors, we just idle them. Loan schedule does perfectly fine, and schedule brings on it. Um, Internally, we provide in the CLIs and this rotation, so you can go in and you can say, here are the CPU cores, what NICs are assigned to it, what traffic rate you're seeing on them. And also, just like uh, the Cisco guys were saying, we needed to uh, do some sleeping to not <coughs> saturate the CPU. So the last column, in that case, in this version, it's microseconds of how many microseconds it's sleeping. So idle, um, you mentioned it earlier. Basically, if you're doing, if you're running the benchmark, you pull 100%, you use 100% of the CPU. Problem is you run into CPU thermal limits, things get down clocked. You don't get any turbo boost. You say, well, why would you want turbo boost? Well, remember I said you have idle threads and also in real life and real customer workloads, you have flows that are in one CPU and not the other. You want the flow that's busy to get the boost. Also, the PCI bus overhead, if you've got a thread pulling a NIC and there's no packets, you're getting PCI bus traffic. And that's interfering with your actual traffic. So we use small sleeps between 0 and 250 microseconds. We, I have a proof of concept that works and uses the RX polling. That's why I've been working on the VMX and Vert, Vert IO drivers for that. Um, Eventually, we'll be switching over, just like you guys will, once we get everybody else on the same page. To do link state, what we do is we use, if we can find, you'll see that I've set a bunch of patches up, always trying to keep an API to see whether the device supports link state or not. If it supports a link state interrupt, we use a link state interrupt. If it doesn't, we have to pull. And we communicate that link state up, up down using a bunch of features that are available in Linux that let you control the visibility of carrier on that, that dummy device. Um, 
And we also use that, it happens every five seconds. It also um, provides statistics back so we can emulate the statistics in the virtual stubby device from the actual hardware. And it also acts as a keep alive. So that's one of the messages that the data plane communicates with the controller. So if the controller doesn't see any updates from the data plane in a long amount of time, it basically marks the link is down, logs messages, admin actions can be taken. The slow path, we use, we have to take packets that are not being run through the switch router infrastructure that need to go back to Linux kernel. Classic one we always talk about is the BGP TCP connection. So what we do is we have a ring, a separate thread, feeding back to the kernel. And likewise, that thread is also responsible for taking packets from the kernel and injecting them into the data plane. What I use a lot to do my performance analysis is run perf. So I will run some workload, run perf, go look what's going inside. These are all really old pictures, but this shows I didn't do very well. I'm spending my time in my IP input path. When I was doing well, and this is an old, really old one, we're spending our time in the hardware routines. And in a normal good test, we're spending 30 to 40 percent of our time in the IHDB driver. So, um, we have internally some performance rules for the fast path, pretty obvious, no syscalls, no POSIX operations, no spin locks. And we make the forwarding threads run its get FIFO so that the forwarding threads get the real time response from the wake ups. Also tells the Linux scheduler to leave us alone. We've also worked with Paul McKinney and the people doing the user know where it's full so that the scheduler leaves the process alone. Uh, there's some recent activity to try to get rid of the last vestiges of that, which is the one se once a second timer tick, and that will probably be going away in the next few months. Um, one thing, when people start playing with the demos, they might not notice. When you're running a demo, you tend to, while the demo code has this read TSC to read the T CPU performance counters. Remember back when Vicky was showing you about that multi-thread execution unit? Well, when you hit one of those, it stops to get the time. So you get this Heisenberg effect. When you're using the TSC counter to measure your code, you're causing your code to go slower. <coughs> So what you want to do is you either know how to aggregate or look differently. Um, another one, we threw this, to, we, at, at one point early on, we were using a lot of BSD code. We pretty much got away from that. If you blindly port BSD code over, you, they have this style where they'll take a function, a block, and initialize a bunch of stuff, and then pass it off to another layer. Compiler does what's required by the C standard and zeroes out that structure does a rep store instruction. Remember those eight execution units? You got one execution unit busy zeroing memory. You're stalled. There are ways around this. Uh, the compiler can be smarter on fixed size structure and generate, instead of a rep instruction, a bunch of moves, which gets the parallelism. But you, have, you get surprised by this. And once again, this is the kind of output you get from perf where it tells you this is the hot spot, you know. <laughs> Go look here. Um, since uh, he's here and we haven't solved the problem, I can pick on Christian. Um, I was looking at the QoS stuff. Uh, we have customers that do lots of QoS, lots of class, and complex ones. And then I got down to the simple case. I was like, well, why would I enable quas on a 10 gig link and I tell it to go 10 gig, is it not going 10 gig? You discover that right here, you have a floating point divide. I don't know if you've read the Intel instruction manual, but basically the slowest instruction in the Intel instruction manual is a floating point divide. Um, so in our version, we 
changed it to a uh, scaled fixed point multiply, which um, works for the data sets. Then we're working on the final patch to try to get the maths right so it covers all possible. Um, one thing we did for a lot of data structures is internally you have to deal with a, a lot of um, mutual exclusion. And I mentioned before we tried to have a no spin lock rule. Obviously you can't for everything. But one thing we used a lot of is there's a user space RCU library which introduces the kernel concepts of read, copy, update into user space. There's a lock free hash algorithm. I, we only use the DPDK hash algorithms in a few limited places because they're static. They're, you have to determine everything. This one is dynamic and it's lockless, for, even for updates. Um, is, is it protected? What? RCU? Yeah, it's in user space RCU library. Pull it from the distro. Um, and I don't want to suck those things into DPDK. I like to have libc, you know, other libraries. Um, the LPM code in the uh, DPDK. It's nice as a starting point, but it doesn't work to build a router. Turns out you need a bunch of things. You need to have uh, barriers. You need to have variable size slash eight tables. And also, you need this to be not just a small index. It needs to be big enough to do the size tables you want. The other thing is we have tests with do add and delete millions of routes. It was an n squared update. So I have a modified version of that. Um, the problem is we're bur kind of burned by two things. One, the ABI would have to change. And two, um, kind of back to the inline, you really get to the point you don't want an inline to look up because you're exposing the structure of the LPM table. Um, so those are the, the key little tidbits that I picked up that I could get into a 15 minute talk. <laughs> um, I have more if you want later, but. So any questions? Yeah, any plans to upstream the LPM uh, changes that you I was gonna say, what do people want? Do you wanna just declare the ABI breakage and do it? Do you wanna do an XLPM library? Um, LPM should be fine. <laughs> I mean, it's basically the same, it's just... Yeah, know, if, it's the same, if it's the same, it probably makes more sense to improve what you already have. And it's not like the hash library needed a, a dope slap between 1.8 and 2.0, I mean... <coughs> Any other questions? Yeah, Jeff. Yeah.